Copyright 2001 by Honey and Gary Golden. Back in the early days, just after the sun had been born, Nola, child of the Creator, came to visit the new sun. On her way there, Nola noticed a barren planet that had come to orbit around the baby sun. Nola smiled at the barren world as she flew by it. Ideas and fantasies began to grow in her head as she journeyed on. By the time Nola got close enough to the sun to say hello, a whole fantastical world had sprouted in her head. She and the sun had quite a long talk about it. The sun thought it would be wonderful to have a beautiful friend he could bestow his warmth upon. It permitted Nola to bring life to this barren orbiter. So it was settled that day, the barren world would come to life. It would be filled with fantastical beings. These would all be small because Nola liked to think of holding them in the palm of her hand. The trees would be tall, the rivers would be deep and wide, the land would be a beautiful green place for all to forage in. On Nola's return trip home from visiting the sun, she stood on the barren world. She imagined every stone, tree, and blade of grass. She created intelligent beings, beings in the water, on the land, and in the sea. As life formed in her head, it spread across the bleak and bare landscape. Soon Nola had finished her work on the once barren planet. Long after she had gone back home, Nola's footprints remain. They were to forever remind the people of her. They were never to be undone. Nola had returned to her home planet, far away in the universe. There she had become a mother of a beautiful baby girl. She had named her daughter Ariana. When Ariana was still very young, she wanted to visit her mother Nola's first world. Her mother used to tell her bedtime stories about it. She told about its fantastic landscapes and the little people who lived there. When it came time for Ariana's first solo journey through the universe, of course she wanted to visit the land of Nola. She wanted to bring it the one thing her mother had forgotten to give it. She wanted to bring it stars. Now Ariana was almost grown up. She gave her mother a big hug. Then she was off riding on the back of her best friend, a rainbow dragon named Raja. They flew through the universe. The stars seemed to whiz by until Nola's world caught their eye. But they didn't land immediately on Nola's world. First they visited its sun. Ariana wanted to ask the sun if he wanted to have stars in his part of the universe. The sun agreed heartily that he wanted stars. He said he wanted more friends to be near him, for he had been very lonely. This sun was quite young. He needed conversation. His one friend, the land of Nola, never talked to him, so he felt like he was talking to himself all the time. How good it would be to talk to the stars. Stars were closer to his kind. Ariana and Raja said goodbye to the sun. They flew back to the small world called the land of Nola. They could see its beauty from very far away, all covered in blues, greens, and purples. Raja tried to land softly on Nola's world, but he landed dangerously near a small river that fed the southern sea. Although the ground looked firm, it was a swamp of spongy purple goo. Raja started to sink, but he flapped his wings wildly until he pulled loose. Both Ariana and Raja were covered with goo. Ariana laughed and Raja snorted. We best have a swim before we meet anyone, suggested Ariana. So Raja took off toward a big lake. He loved the feel of water on his scales. The two friends dipped in and out of the waves. Ariana clung tightly and laughed some more. As Ariana and Raja dried themselves on a pale purple beach, Umbra and his small party of fungi friends got up the courage to venture out from behind the trees. They wanted to say hello to the two strangers, even though Ariana and Raja were at least ten times their fungi size. Umbra believed that anyone who laughed as these strangers did could not be bad. Ariana and Raja didn't notice the fungi until they were just a few feet away. The fungi were very small. They had big green eyes and tiny round noses. Their skin was a warm brown. They wore hats that looked like purple pancakes. They carried bags made of twine. The bags were bulging with stringies. Umbra cleared his small throat to say, Hello. Ariana, who had learned fungi language from her mother, replied with a greeting. Then she asked what seemed like a million questions. She asked about the ways of the fungi. She wanted to know why they all wore pancake hats. 
She wondered what they would do with all their stringies. Near the end of her list of questions, she paused and apologized. She introduced herself as the daughter of Nola, and she introduced Raja as her friend. When Ariana told the fungi that she was the daughter of Nola, Umbra was ready to take turn asking questions. And all the other fungi kept telling him what to ask. How old are you? The fungi wanted Ariana to tell them. How could Ariana look so young if she was the daughter of Nola, they wondered. The fungi knew that generations of their people had come and gone since Nola created the life on their world. Ariana smiled. She said she was actually very young for her race. Just 372 journeys of the fungi's world as they circled his baby son. Umbra could hardly believe it. Oldest person they knew was 200 turns around the sun. She had hair like a fluffy white cloud. Ariana and Umbra talked so long that Raja got sleepy and took a nap. Little Izzy took the opportunity to run his tiny fingers over Raja's huge scales. They felt like the smoothest river stones. They sparkled all different colors as the sun made his way across the sky. Ariana offered to give Umbra and his friend a ride home on Raja's back. But Izzy was the only one willing to ride, with Izzy's mother's permission. Ariana, Raja, and Izzy took off in the direction of Fungi's home. When Raja and his two passengers landed near Izzy's village, the Fungi's were frantic. There was a great hubbub among the people, for they had never seen a dragon before, Izzy excitedly explained. He assured the Fungi that Ariana had come to give them some stars. The hubbub started up again. What was a star, and why would they want any? The Fungi's wanted to know. Ariana tried her best to explain. No one seemed to understand how wonderful stars could be. Ariana promised to show them. Tonight, she said, Raja and I will spread stars through the sky, but we will collect them the next night if no one likes them. The Fungi's were happy with Ariana's promise. They invited Ariana and Raja to dinner. Raja wasn't hungry since he only ate once a week, but Ariana was glad to join them for a combination of mushrooms, bread, and cheese. As the sun was going down over the purple horizon, Ariana and Raja stepped away from the group. Ariana pulled something from her pocket, gave it a flick, and voila, it was a bucket. When she placed her hand over the top of that bucket, it began to glow. Ariana and Raja took off with a great flapping of Raja's wings. Little Izzy, who had gotten too close, had to sit down or be blown over. While Ariana and Raja were somewhere high in the evening sky, the wits began to arrive on the fungi shore. Wits were water people. They lived deep down at the bottom of the lake. The sunlight was too bright for their sensitive eyes, so they only visited the fungi in the evenings. Elgamerak, the oldest and wisest of the wits, sloshed straight up to Umbra. He wanted to know about the great winged beast he had seen, leaving at the same time he had left the water of the lake. Before Umbra could answer, the brand new stars began to twinkle. All the fungi and the wits, and even the fairies from the forest, watched the awakening evening sky in awe. The fungi and fairies had wondrous smiles upon their little faces. The wits were only amazed. Ariana's magic bucket must have been filled to the brim with stars, for the sky soon became bright with her twinkling. Soon no corner of the sky was dark. The fungi and the fairies could see almost as well as they could during the day but all the wits were squinting their sensitive eyes. Reflections of stars twinkled in everyone's eyes, but the wits were not happy. How could they visit their friends in this bright evening light? How would they be able to share their stories about life at the bottom of the lake? When Elga Merrick spoke up, there was sadness in his voice. What is happening? he demanded of Ariana as she lowered herself from the shoulders of her great dragon friend. Ariana's smile faltered. She hadn't expected stars to be a problem for anyone. Now she could see that the wits were very uncomfortable with the new starlight. What could Ariana do but try to reassure the wits? These can be temporary stars, she promised. I'll take them all down tomorrow night if we can't figure out what to do by then. It was then that Ariana noticed little blue lights in the trees. 
Then she noticed one of them standing on the tip of her big toe. Ariana had to bend down for a closer look before she could determine what the little light might be. She saw a very tiny but very lovely lady looking up at her. It was Zandria, spokeswoman for the fairies. She had bright red hair and twinkling blue eyes. Her pale blue light was not reflected from the stars. It was all her own. As Zandria began to speak, her light changed to pink. Ariana struggled to hear Zandria's tiny voice. But finally, Ariana understood that Zandria was asking her if the new stars in the sky were fairy folk. Had they gotten lost from the safety of the trees? Were they newly born, or did they come from another place? They are so beautiful, Zandria exclaimed. Umbra, who had come to stand next to Elgamerik, said he agreed that the stars were very beautiful. Elgamerik shook his head in disagreement. He said darkness was the most beautiful thing to his eyes. Zandria and her fairy friends began to dance wildly. The tiny lights flickered everywhere. They sang a tiny, wild song to welcome the stars. Even some of the wits could not help but smile. Ariana requested that everyone put aside their worries for the night. They could talk again in the morning. She went to sleep near Raja, and as she slept, she dreamed of stars looking for their home. She knew that she must bring stars to the sky above the land of Nola. The stars needed to be there just as much as the little world needed them. She knew she must find a way that would make all the people happy. Before midnight came, Ariana and Raja woke to find wits and fairies and fungi worrying what to do about the stars. Everyone wanted to think of something to help with the wits to love the stars. By the time midnight rolled around in the land of Nola, Ariana and Raja had almost given up hope of finding the answer that they were seeking. All the people gathered on the beach to ponder the question, what would help the wits to love the stars? Unexpectedly, Zandria, the fairy, climbed back onto Ariana's toe. From a tiny bag, Zandria lifted something. It was round and smooth and flat. It was a transparent forest green. Ariana lifted Zandria closer to her ear so that she could hear the story of the little green dot. The dot was a drop of water from the green pond near the fairy's home. Fairies had let it fall on a flat rock. Then they had frozen it with fairy dust. When Ariana looked through it, everything was darkened by its deep green color. Very many green dots had been manufactured by the fairies. Ariana smiled for the first time that long night. She knew that the fairies had found the answer. Raja's heart felt light again as his worry began to melt away. The wits, of course, tried the fairy glass immediately. Elgomeric could stand to look directly at Zandria through the green glass. For the first time, he realized how beautiful fairies were. On that night, the fungi's wits and fairies all gathered together to hear stories about life at the bottom of the lake. They listened to Elgomeric. He was the greatest storyteller of all. After most of the people had gone to bed, Algamaric asked Zandria if she had magic that would hold the glasses up to his eyes so that he could rest his arms. Zandria couldn't think of a way to do it. Umbra, who had been listening closely, thought he might have an answer. He pulled a piece of string from his bag. Why couldn't we weave a string around the glass to make a frame, then tie the glasses around the wits' heads to keep them on? The fairies brought many bags of glass dots. The fungi wove wonderful frames for them out of string. Zandria's glow turned pink again as she praised Umbra for his wisdom. Everyone was happy. Ariana and Raja did not have to collect the stars back from the sky. Then Ariana fell asleep on Raja's broad shoulder. She had had a hard night.